I like whenever I'm at a meeting with uh, Mike, I always do the balloon expandable talk. And when I'm ever at a meeting with Marty, I always do the self-expanding talk. So it's actually nice to be able to to do both. But I'm excited about uh, both uh, both platforms. Um, so the um, you know I'm going to mostly focus you know the balloon expandable outside of a. Uh, a uh, copycat Brazilian device is pretty much limited to um, the uh, the uh, Edwards uh, Sapien. I'm going to focus on the Sapien 3 rather than than do the whole history of the valve. But I will spend a little bit of time on the uh, on the data we have from this. So the the first trial in randomized trial in TAVI was the the Partner 1B trial, which basically compared standard therapy versus TAVI in patients who are not surgical candidates. So the standard therapy was medical management, frequently with a valvuloplasty. But this was you know, one of the most impressive trials in all of cardiovascular medicine, and a, just a 20% difference at one year. Um, that, you know, the number needed to treat was five patients, which was, again, very remarkable. and, and uh, um, you know, out to five years, the data is good, but this was a sick population, so the survival was uh, was very low. In fact, only one standard therapy patient who hadn't crossed over was still alive uh, at um, <clears throat> at five years. Um, but it did improve a median survival uh, to 30 months. Um, and more importantly, especially in this population, which is a group that. Um, you know, they're near end of life anyway, the fact that it, it improved their quality of life significantly, both in um, New York Heart Association, but also other quality of, uh, other quality metrics. Now, in the 1B trial, it took high-risk patients, and it randomized uh, surgery and uh, uh, TAVI, and that demonstrated um, that the, the TAVI was equivalent to surgery. Um, uh, as opposed to the, I'm sure the core valve trial Mike will show you where there was actually superiority. Uh, if you did take the trans thoracic approaches out of this, then then a transfemoral TAVR actually did do better than than surgery in a high risk population uh, with very good data out to five years. Now uh, the valves uh, behave uh, um, have better hemodynamics than surgical valves, probably clinically not significant, but out to five years the durability has been stable. Um, the problem with uh, all of the valves is certainly the amount of uh, PVL and found that patients who have uh, moderate to severe PVL, and maybe even mild, actually have a survival uh, disadvantage. Now, recently we had the Partner 2A results presented, which was the, the first trial looking at intermediate risk patients. And that, and if you look at the entire trial, the as treated, uh, which again included transthoracic approaches, um, TAVI was found to be equivalent to surgery in this population. If you looked at just the TF patients, then TAVI was actually uh, superior to surgery in uh, intermediate risk patients. Uh, the, uh, as you might expect, there's more vascular complications with TAVI, um, but the uh, bleeding, kidney injury, and new AFib was uh, significantly worse in the uh, surgery patients. Uh, performance of valves was... Uh, uh, continue to be excellent. So the newest uh, version of the Sapien system is the Sapien 3, and I'll go over the changes, but this is what is uh, <clears throat> clinically available now for the transfemoral approach uh, and what is being used in the low-risk trial. So it's really designed to have a l lower profile delivery as well as optimize other features. Um, the, uh, the cell design has changed a lot, which allows it to crimp at a lower profile. Um, bigger cells, which they argue is for coronary access. I don't think that's necessarily the design, but, I, they, but it is a, definitely a positive benefit uh, of this device. It is easier to, up to uh, access the coronaries. Um, but due to the cell design, there's um, the uh, shortening all really occurs from the, uh, uh, the uh, ventricular side. Um, uh, the, you know, there's obviously a lot like all these modifications in, in radial strength because um, there was some recoil observed in the early uh, XT experience, per, particularly in the 1B trial, uh, where there seemed to be some PVL that got worse after deployment. There are four sizes available, which covers a, a T, an annulus from 16 to 28 millimeters. Uh, the, with this valve, we really uh, do it by area. The upper limit is, is 680, but I and others have, have treated patients certainly above 700 into the 730. 740 range um, uh, quite successfully. 
uh, discuss the, the short, because of the cell design, there is a lot of, you know, it's, it's a much longer uh, valve uh, at once it's crimped, um, but it, it shortens, uh, you know, in the up to eight and a half millimeters if you're in the 29 valve. Again, all from the ventricular side, you can see here, you basically align the, the arrow cut at just above the uh, annulus, and you can see that it's almost all foreshortens from the uh, the, the ventricular side, but it is it's quite predictable at least, which was which was not the case with the you know the early sapien valve. Uh, it was much less predictable, which granted was also due to the uh, to the balloon. Now, one of the obvious big changes with the sapien three is the addition of the skirt, which is intended to um, help reduce the uh, the PVL. Um, the delivery system is they switch to an E sheath, so it it goes in at a 14 French or a 16 French if the 29. Now understand the E is exp means expandable, so the the sheath does have to expand some. So you can't you know while you can get it in at the equivalent to a 14 French sheath, you do have to allow some expansion. So there's a kind of a it fits in the middle ground between what the sheath goes in and what it has to expand to, but it's it's certainly a, certainly an improvement and the recommended middle vessel size is 5.5 for the lower three sizes and six millimeters for the uh, the large valve but again this is something that uh, I think we've all pushed uh, the system is docked in the patient which allows the lower profile so you basically crimp the valve but behind the balloon and then once it's in the patient you you dock the valve over the balloon where the profile expands um, and newer versions are actually going to come uh, mounted on the, the balloon actually. So it does have this flex system, which I think is an advantage for being able to uh, to navigate around the arch. And with the Sapien 3s, there's actually an additional uh, additional flexing that allows to, um, that allows, if, if, which is I think is a rare feature that you have to use, but you can add some addition, additional flexation to it. Uh, <clears throat> there's also a knob, once you're in the spot where you want to be, there's a knob that you can, oops, sorry, that you can turn that allows uh, just kind of some subtle subtle adjustments. So it's really became a, just a much easier procedure than we were dealing with with the first, uh, uh, the first study. So there's, uh, with the Sapien 3, there's been both um, <coughs> the C study in high-risk patients and a, a part of the Partner 2 registry in high-risk patients in the U.S. The average STS score was 74 and 8.6%. And Patients were at least 82. You can see in the U.S. it was almost uh, predominantly transfemoral, uh, whereas there was more thoracic approaches in the 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 uh, CE mark study. Um, the uh, mortality, this is 30-day mortality, was better than we've seen with anything. Um, with the uh, all-cause transfemoral mortality in the U.S., it was uh, only 1.6% higher, as we have always ex expected with uh, the non-iliofemoral uh, non approaches. The stroke rate was, uh, uh, again, better than anything we've seen, uh, down to... Um, uh, all strokes was 1.6, and disabling stroke was only 1% at uh, at 30 day. In terms of uh, uh, vascular complications and uh, life threatening bleeding, again, just uh, you know much lower rates than we've seen in the U.S. experience, less than 6% for both. Uh, there's also been intermediate risk studies, um, you know. They're both the uh, with the U.S. again part of the Partner Two trial um, and uh, CE trial as well, and all these many more patients in the uh, in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. study. The 30-day mortality, the STS 5.3 percent uh, in the U.S. age about 82, pretty similar age surprisingly even as we go down to intermediate risk. The mortality here was just remarkable with uh, transfemoral only being 1.1. Stroke rate was. Uh, uh, 2.4, a little higher in, in uh, Europe. And you can see just comparing the, the whole system um, at 30-day mortality, there's just been a, a, a significant improvement in mortality. And part of this is, you know, part of it is certainly the device, but I think part of it is our patient selection, <clears throat> risk profile of the patients, and, and certainly our experience and comfort with these procedures. Um, one of the, the tradebacks uh, with the 
with uh, S3 was a higher pacemaker rate than we've seen in the earlier Sapien experience, um, probably due to the longer frame. Uh, this is the early experience, and there's some suggestion that uh, with uh, more experience, this rate is coming down. And I think we're, you know, I think it'll still probably be a little higher than we've seen with Sapien and Sapien XT, but it should be sub. Uh, uh, sub sub uh, ten percent, as we've seen, as we have more experience. Um, the PVL rates again, the addition of the skirt, so we're now looking at moderate to severe, less than four percent. Um, majority of patients with uh, none trace, and about forty one percent with uh, with mild. Uh, the hemodynamics, forward flow hemodynamics of the valve are excellent. Uh, you can see the kind of overall the valve area goes to one point six seven, and with uh, each of the the sizes, you know, obviously it's going to be less depending on which size you use. But they're also a twenty millimeters, a new addition to the uh, S three portfolio. Um, the one year survival, the looking at the inoperative cohort from the U S, was actually eighty five point six percent, which uh, included. Um, inoperable and high risk. It was obviously a little better for the high risk than it was those patients that were deemed inoperable. Um, and this was uh, particularly so with the, uh, the uh, transfemoral, uh, transfemoral approach improvement, like all the TAVI trials in terms of uh, functional class. Um, uh, paravalvular regurgitation, again, a lot better than we've seen in uh, you know, other trials suggesting that the skirt really did have a, a positive, uh, positive effect. Um, the interestingly in this trial as opposed to the other sapien trials we found that there was not a um, uh, a uh, mortality disadvantage to having mild PVL in the earlier trials there actually was a disadvantage and it's you know it's hard to say what that what why that would be the case and I suspect a lot of it comes down to a uh, core lab interpretation because the core lab is, is different for this and what maybe was previously is decided to be uh, mild you know the moderate to mild stuff perhaps was uh, judged as mild and, and in more recent analysis the that stuff may have gone more towards the moderate side um, uh, like the 30-day mortality, the one-year mortality has improved a lot with this system. Um, the um, in the uh, partner two um, randomized against uh, surgery. The um, the, the neurologic. Um, rates as the the mortality and neurologic rate was better so so this is actually taking the they took the sapien 3 intermediate from the registry and compared it to the patients that were um, in the P2A trial randomized to surgery. So they were both intermediate risk. It was not one-to-one -one randomization. They used a propensity scoring, not propensity matching. Don't ask me to explain the difference, but propensity scoring to, to compare these two populations. And, and in this case, the, the uh, Sapien 3 was just, you know, where it was felt to be equivalent in the... Um, it, in the 2A trial using the XT device, there was a marked uh, advantage in intermediate risk patients of using the Sapien 3 valve over surgery uh, in terms of mortality and stroke, in terms of just mortality alone. I mean, out to a year, uh, uh, you know, 7.4 percent mortality is is just really remarkable in a population that again, they're they're intermediate risk again, probably a population that now we're calling high risk. Quite honestly, um, stroke was uh, lower. This is all neurologist diagnosing stroke. It's no longer me diagnosing the stroke. So if these are really. Uh, a real event. So in concluding, I think uh, Blooming Spinal Taverts demonstrates superior over surgery, certainly in high and intermediate risk patients, with the caveat that it is transfemoral. Um, you know, we have not seen an advantage with the uh, non-iliofemoral uh, um, uh, approaches. Uh, it's a, a, the Sapien 3 is certainly an advantage over prior uh, versions in that it, it's uh, become lower profile um, with a solution for PVL and the data would demonstrate that the PVL is uh, improved and it's also a much more user friendly system. I think it's a lot easier than, than prior, prior uh, versions. So I will stop there and thank you very much.